In the waning years of the Galactic Republic, the Greedy Trade Federation were getting bolder, as in response to Prop 31814D, a Senate law enabling the taxation of the free trade zones, the Federation in retaliation blockaded the Midrim planet of Naboo. To settle negotiations with the leader of the Trade Federation, Viceroy Newt Gunray, the Republic Supreme Chancellor, Venice Valorum, sent two members of the Jedi Order as ambassadors. However, the negotiations were short, or more to fact, non-existent, as the Viceroy dispatched a squadron of battle droids to exterminate the Jedi Knights in the waiting room. However, the Jedi Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi survived the encounter and stowed away on the Trade Federation's invasion craft to escape to the planet's surface, failing their mission to stop the invasion. Jamming communications while invading the planet, the Federation's droid army advanced on the capital city of Feed with little opposition due to the small force of the Royal Naboo Security Forces. Within hours, the droid army had taken feed, leaving the planet completely under the Federation's control. Viceroy Newt Gunray and his right-hand man, Rune Hako, landed on the planet to assume control of the throne room. However, Queen Armadara refused to sign a treaty proposed by the Federation to legalize the occupation of Naboo. Displeased of the young queen's will, Newt Gunray ordered for her to be processed in one of the occupation camps. Fortunately, during her transportation of the Queen and her entourage, the two Jedi Knights and a Gungan of Naboo swamps battled the droid escorts and convinced the Queen to escape the planet to be able to ask the Senate to condemn the invasion of Naboo on the Republic capital Coruscant. And managing to break through the Federation blockade on the Queen's royal starship, the escapees were racing towards the Republic capital. However, the hyperdrive of the J-Type 327 Nubian had been badly damaged and was leaking. The group decided to hide on the arid planet of Tatooine in the Outer Rim territories until a replacement could be found. The Viceroy Newt Gunray was in a difficult position. Desperate to find the young queen, he made contact with an unknown figure cloaked in black, of whom was displeased of the situation that had unfolded. During the escapee's time on Tatooine, the Jedi Qui-Gon Jinn had yet found another child to indoctrinate into the Jedi Order. This boy was none other than the famed General Anakin Skywalker of the later Clone Wars. Reports tell us that the over-arrogant Jedi Master, Qui-Gon Jinn, was gambling all of the Queen's possessions, including the ship, on the nine-year-old boy to win the boon to Eve Podrace for a new hyperdrive that would compute with the Royal Starship. Fortunately, though risky, the Jedi Master's gamble had paid off, taking the boy and the hyperdrive from Tatooine. However, before the group left the Ares planet, they were ambushed by a cloak figure wielding a red lightsaber. The Jedi Master Krygon Jin dueled this assassin, barely escaping with his life as he leaped onto the ramp of the Royal Starship as it flew away. After their encounter of the cloaked assassin sent by the Trade Federation, the Queen, the Jedi, and the Naboo escapees arrived safely on Coruscant. There, they were met by Sheev Palpatine, who was the Senator of Naboo at the time, and Supreme Chancellor Venice Valora. Eager to free her people from the Federation occupation, Queen Armadala spoke before the thousands of delegates in the meeting of the Galactic Senate. Yet her pleas were instantly met with hostility, accused of lies and baseless accusations by the representative of the Trade Federation, Lot Dot, and backed by other senators in the Federation's pocket. Angry and dismayed by the blatant corruption of the Senate, Queen Armadala, at the advice of Senator Palpatine, shocked the Senate by moving for a vote of no confidence in the leadership of Chancellor Valora. Within hours, Senator Palpatine was named one of the nominees, alongside Bail Antidus and Aelan Team, to succeed Valorum, promising the Queen to clean up the rampant corruption in the Senate. However, the process of election of a new Supreme Chancellor was still too long for the Queen to idly bicker with Senators, as her people were dying. Herself, her entourage, the Gungan Jar Jar Binks, and the Jedi including the boy Skywalker returned to Naboo formulating a plan to capture Viceroy Newt Gunray and feed, thus taking back the planet. 
With the aid of Jar Jar Binks, an alliance was formed with the Gungans and the people of Naboo and organized together all resistant cells in the Naboo system. The plan was for the Gungan Grand Army to engage the Federation's droid army on the open plains outside the city of Feed. While the resistant cells of Naboo, the Queen and the Jedi infiltrated Feed to capture Newt Gunray. While the small number of Naboo pilots attempt to destroy the only Luke and Hawk class battleship still in orbit, where all the battle droids were under control of the central computer. The battle was going according to plan, and the Federation's battle droids were successfully lured away from Feed, leaving only a thin defense force in the streets. However, after the Naboo team made it into the Royal Hangar Bay, they were greeted by the mysterious cloaked figure. Revealing his horned head and his striking red and black tattoos, the Zabrak ignited his crimson lightsaber from both tips of his hilt. The two Jedi Knights engaged the assassin, while the Naboo infiltration team and the Queen pressed on to capture the Viceroy. Meanwhile, the Naboo pilots made their way to disable the Federation's battleship, aided by the unexpected Skywalker. A battle raged on on all fronts. The Gungan's distraction was becoming a too great of cost. The battleship was impenetrable, and the Jedi Master, Qui-Gon Jinn, was defeated. All was dire as the plan was falling to pieces. Fortunately, the Naboo pilots had found a weakness in the Federation's battleship, as the young Skywalker in an N1 Starfighter shot a torpedo at the exposed reactor while inside the Luke and Hawk, causing a chain reaction, exploding the battleship. The young Skywalker escaped the blast, cheering with his fellow pilots as they returned to the planet below. Due to the destruction of the Lucre Hawk, the central computer was no longer in operation, causing the droid army to shut down. The Battle of Naboo was won. Queen Padme Amidala captured the Viceroy, and the Jedi Obi-Wan Kenobi defeated the mysterious assassin. The invasion of Naboo and occupation of the Trade Federation was over. Peace and order was restored across the planet. Soon after, to celebrate the Naboo victory and to oversee the arrest of Viceroy Newt Gunray and Rune Hako, the newly elected Supreme Chancellor Sheev Palpatine arrived to the city of Feed, promising to bring Newt Gunray and his lieutenant to justice and end the corruption of the Senate. Though all was well, the Jedi High Council, who joined the Chancellor, seemed in discomfort as an agreement from Chancellor Palpatine, many questions were left unanswered. Why would members of the Trade Federation be so inclined to occupy Naboo? Who else is conspiring against the Republic? And who was this lightsaber-wielding assassin? <laughs>